Hi everyone, I'm Tony Fianaka from Sparks Florist. I'm here today to talk to you about how to make a grid with different arrangements. And for any type of floral designer, what we're really trying to do is build foundational pieces that we can add the flowers to and not have them move around uh, in the arrangement after it's been fully made. And I'm sure everyone's probably experienced this before. You go out to the store, you buy a bouquet of flowers and you have a vase at home because who doesn't have a million vases underneath their sink? And you try to put the flowers in there and they just flop everywhere. Well, today we're working on those grids and that's really what's gonna keep those flowers from moving and keep them nice and steady in, in any arrangement. So I'm gonna go through uh, really five different renditions of a grid. And these are really the basic ones. They're much more complicated ones as well, but these are the ones you really need to know. First to get started, let me show you all the different tools that I normally keep on me so that you can kind of have a good idea of what you need to uh, have with you when you're doing floral design. First and foremost, I always keep a pen on me. And the reason why I keep a pen on me is because I like to write out all of my recipes and I like to cost them out to make sure I'm using all of the, the right amount of uh, money for each of my arrangements. Remember, we're in business uh, to make money, even though we're conveying emotions and you know we're our, we are very nice people. But at the end of the day, you have to make money in this business uh, to be able to keep your doors open. So uh, writing recipes really makes a big difference. And so pen needs to be one of the tools you have on hand. Uh, second one, I have some uh, nice wire clippers um, and you know we work with wires all the time. We make bows and all different manners of things and it, it does require wire clippers. Next I have two different pairs of scissors and you might ask why do you keep two pairs of scissors? Well, one of them is my ribbon scissors, which are my good pair of scissors, and the other one are my bad scissors, which sometimes will be used to cut different materials, not ribbon. So I find it really helpful if you have a good pair and a bad pair and to keep those on you at all times. Next, of course, uh, any good florist can't live without their florist knife. And these are just nice, small parry knives. Um, sometimes they fold like mine. Um, other times they don't. Um, it doesn't really matter if it folds or not. It just matters that it's a nice little knife that fits in your hand. And remember, when you're working with a knife, you want to use proper knife skills as well. And a lot of times, um, the way we want to do this, let me just take a piece of this salal here and show you is we want to keep the distance in between our knife and the thumb the same, exactly the same for every single one of the cuts we do. The idea here is that we are able to place the stem behind our thumb, but in front of um, our knife, kind of like this. Let me go ahead and turn like this so you can see. And the idea here is not to push into the knife with your thumb. That's really not what you want. That's gonna cause yourself to get a nice, a nice cut on the thumb. Instead, what you wanna do is just pull the actual salal away from you. And that motion actually will end up cutting the stem itself. So that's really important. Um, and a great way of practicing that, take a piece of celery and go ahead and cut celery doing this method. You'll find that it works very, very well. And if you're making a soup, then you've just done all of your work for you. Um, so you want to have a knife. Next, for stems that are a little bit pesky, you need to make sure you have a good pair of uh, gardener shears or pruning shears. Um, I like to use these Fiskars. They're, they're great quality uh, clippers, but make sure you have them because for lots of the greens we use, they're more like hedges and they're thicker and you really shouldn't be using a knife for that. You should be using something a little bit heavier. Um, next, I have a couple of other supplies which um, are uh, different forms of tape. So right here, this is a corsage tape which I keep on me. It's used from everything from making boutonnieres and corsages to wedding bouquets and everything in between. It's very handy. And the way that this uh, corsage tape works is it only, uh, the adhesive only activates once you tug on it. So you can see it's stretching slightly and that's what actually causes it to become sticky and it really sticks to itself. So uh, it's a great product for, for like the aforementioned different designs. Alrighty. So then uh, the next, uh, type of tape we have is a waterproof tape. And you can see this is a nice green tape. It's a little bit thicker um, in terms of uh, the actual thickness of the tape itself, but it's very sticky. And we'll see how that works in some of our grids here in a moment. Next, we also have some clear tape. And this clear tape, it sometimes is also known as bowl tape. Um, it's used to cover the tops of different vases. So that way you can create kind of an instant grid. And we'll see how this is used here in a couple of minutes. And then lastly, I always keep with me some bind wire. And bind wire is one of the uh, better inventions that came out of the last decade in the floral industry. This is basically a really thin wire. Think of it like a bread tie that just keeps on going forever and ever. And it's uh, just a really thin wire wrapped in a raffia-like material. It comes in either green or it comes in brown. Um, it's extremely useful. And we'll, we'll see that here in a couple of minutes. 
So let's go ahead and start with our, our very first grid. Our first grid is going to be with foam. And you're probably familiar with seeing uh, a tray like this. And oftentimes they come like this if you're in one of the, our competitions. But uh, the tray itself um, has kind of like little uh, pokers in the bottom that kind of come up. And it really just holds the foam in there nicely. Now, you can tell that this one I have up here is, is pre-wet. So it's ready for me to design in. But let me show you how I got to this point. What I did was I took a piece of dry foam. You see how it's much lighter in color. This is dry. And um, you, can, you can do a couple different things here. You can go ahead and take a little bit of glue, just dip it in some hot glue, and then stick it in and just hold it there. And then you can soak it, which is what I've done with this first one. Or if you don't have hot glue, you can use this uh, waterproof tape. And what you want to do here is just take the tape and you kind of go across the top of your foam. And I'll go ahead and hold this up so everyone can see here in a second how this is going to look. But I'm going to go and make kind of an x pattern across the top of the foam. And notice I do this while it's dry. It's really important that the foam is dry here because a lot of times this waterproof tape is not going to stick very well if it's wet and especially if the container is wet. So you want to make sure to do it while, you, while it's nice and dry and then go ahead and put it into the sink. And uh, another key thing that you need to make sure you're watching out for when you have foam is I don't want to see anyone taking their foam and submerging it under water because they want to work with their flowers faster. That's really the wrong thing to do because what will happen is your foam will actually gather air inside of it and it won't be able to escape fast enough if you force it under. Instead what you want to do is take this uh, foamed container and you tilt it on its side in the sink and then you let it go and it'll sink all on its own. You just want to make sure that you go ahead and, and let it actually take the time to sink uh, by itself. So you set it in there and then you know walk away from it, go get your flowers, get your station prepared, and then go ahead, pull it out when it's nice and soaked and more like this color here. All right, so let me show you what we're looking for um, with uh, greening an arrangement like this. So remember I told you the grid was the most fundamental unit of any design. And in this case, the foam actually acts as our grid. Remember, it's actually what's keeping things from moving. And it's going to work uh, really nicely at holding everything nice and steady. So for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use a little bit of leather leaf. And I like to take my leather leaf and cut it into a couple of pieces. So you can see I'm cutting it down like this. And then I'm going to insert the first couple pieces really low in the container. And you can actually see it's actually touching the side of the container here. And it kind of drapes downward a little bit. This is really important. You want to make sure for the first couple pieces you put in, uh, sit really on top of that, that lip of that container. And that's going to help hide the bottom of this container. That's, that's really a key here whenever you're making any type of centerpiece. And I like to go ahead and set up my centerpieces so that way I have, uh, I establish my, my length and my width first. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of pick out some little fronds here that I think makes sense. And I'm going to go ahead and empty out some water so I can hold this up for you. But you see, I've kind of made little, little points here on each side of my, my centerpiece tray. Then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish my height. I always like to tell uh, any of my students who are uh, working on arrangements, who are learning how to, how to do floral design, what you want to think of this is like you're learning how to color, like when you're in kindergarten. So it's really easy to color if you have all the lines first. Um, then you know where to color inside. So the same thing is true with floral design. We want to establish those lines first. We want to establish our height and width first um, and our length first. And that will actually help us um, go ahead and have a nice cohesive design as we, as we go through this process of, of creating a flower arrangement. So the next thing I'll do is I'll actually go through and just add in all of these different fronds. You notice I'm actually cutting them here closer to the, the central stem. And I'm kind of doing them at, at different angles. And I'm adding them all throughout the design. So I'll go ahead and rotate this around so everyone can see what I have going on here. But I'm making sure to add more down around the rim. I don't want to show off this container, you know, since it is a, just a plastic container, there's really nothing special about it. So what we really want to do is we want to kind of start to hide that a little bit. And whenever you're uh, doing a design like this, 
you might start asking yourself, well, uh, when, when should I stop actually adding all of my greenery to this arrangement? And the answer to that is, um, is that you, know, you, you wanna do it when you can still see the foam, but just, just barely. You don't wanna be seeing a ton of foam here. I like to say that you're, you're basically just camouflaging that foam. So let me turn this around. You can see the big difference in between this side and this side, right? This side you can see a lot more foam, this side you cannot. So this is really what we're looking for. We wanna have just a really light uh, bit of foam that you can just barely see and that's it. And then we're ready to go ahead and work on this one. All right, so this is how you would make uh, a really simple base for a green arrangement for a grid using foam. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one. Now our second one is really a fun technique. This technique um, is called a curly willow grid. And I have a little bit of curly willow here. Now this technique was actually uh, developed uh, in kind of, in a lot of Asian cultures and more Eastern types of uh, floral design. And what we would see in, in those designs is oftentimes very um, ornate vases and they would want to put just maybe one really pretty stem of flowers coming up and out of the vase. And uh, in order to do that, they would need to have some sort of structure inside the vase to make sure that the flowers couldn't move around. And this is what they came up with. They actually uh, notched different types of stems into the vase, in the inside of the vase. And then when they added everything to it, it got caught up inside uh, the stems that were that inside that inside that vase. So you can see all I did with that curly willow is I wrapped it around my hand and I just really set it down into the water and that's, that's really as complicated as it gets. So from here what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and add in more of a denser green. This is Oregonia and it looks you know, like any type of hedge you could find in really uh, many parts of, of Nevada. You might even find it in your backyard for that matter especially with all the different types of landscapes we have going on now. And notice I picked branches that had lots of what we call breaks. So there's multiple stems coming off one central stem. This is important. This is something I term as having high grid factor. And so what that means is that it's gonna help strengthen the grid. It's something that has lots and lots of breaks opposed to something like a piece of salal, which is straight, right? So this has a lower grid factor than something like this because this has lots of breaks to it. This is better for an arrangement like this. Typically when I'm making floral arrangements, I'll try to pick out even the flowers that have higher grid factor and use them first. And you'll find by doing this, your flowers will stay more stable as you add more and more into the arrangement. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add in my Oregonia. And notice one of the things I'm doing here, when I take my Oregonia, I'm just stripping off the bottom. I'm taking off those bottom leaves. This is important because we wanna make sure with our floral arrangements that we're reducing the amount of food that bacteria might have to be able to eat all these different, um, different flowers and different types of greenery. So uh, this is one of their main food sources, all this different foliage that we get underneath the water. So by removing it, I'm removing that food source and thus I'm slowing down the bacteria growth rate and that's really important. Now. Uh, this is a really pretty bowl of Oregonia. One of the things I like to do though is I, I do like to mix different colors um, into my designs, and especially with the greenery, it'll make it look a little more lush. So now I'm gonna go back with a little bit of my Salal, and I'm gonna just add it here and there. And notice when I put it in, it doesn't shift or move at all. And this is gonna happen um, even with uh, my flowers as I start putting those in. They're gonna sit really, really steady in that vase, and that's, that's exactly what we want. So I might just do maybe three stems here. All right, so this would be a great little grid for you to do. It's a curly willow grid. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our third grid. So the third grid um, is a really fun one. It's um, just made out of clear bowl tape. So what we've done here is we've taken this tape and then we made, we taped right across the top and made a tic-tac-toe pattern across the top of the vase, right? So we went here, 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 here. 
And then you see how this has kind of a lip here on the vase? We went all the way around with the tape and we went around about twice. And that's gonna hold on this tape that's sitting on the top here. And I don't know if you, everyone can see it. I'm gonna try to tilt it, but you can see there's definitely a nice little tape grid there. And what we've done is we've just basically taken this really large uh, vase and we've shrunk it down to maybe an inch by an inch. So this is great. This is a lot easier for us to be able to add different types of greenery in. And it's a lot easier for us to deal with one inch rather than dealing with four to five inches. So the next thing we'll go ahead and do is we'll add in, you guessed it, a little bit of Oregonia. And what we want to do here is really just add a little bit into each one of these smaller inch by inch squares. All right. So you can see I'm just kind of breaking some off, taking off those leaves just like I did in the previous grid, cutting the end again, and setting it right in. All right. And just like in the last one, um, I don't want it to just be an only Oregonia uh, bouquet here, or only Oregonia grid. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to grab this other really nice type of green, uh, which is called seeded eucalyptus. And the eucalyptus family of greenery is huge. There's all different sorts, but one of the things that's really common in between all of them is if you kind of crush the leaves and smell them, you'll smell that really pungent eucalyptus smell. Um, and seeded eucalyptus just gives us a great texture, and it's a nice kind of a lighter gray color um, in terms of, of a greenery. So it's really going to add texture and color to our, our arrangement here and give it a different quality. I think it's really pretty. And again, I want to add it throughout the bouquet. All right. Now when you end up with something like this, you're, you're pretty much done. It's nice and full. And if you find that you have something that sits a little bit outside of your frame, you can always go back and give it a haircut. One of the things I, I always recommend everyone does, don't try to pull a type of greenery out of your grid once you have it in. You'll find that when you do that, you'll pull half the grid with you. Um, and uh, the other problem with it is that if you're using things like foam, you're going to make that foam become really unstable as you take more and more out of the arrangement. So you want to make sure, just go ahead and go back with your clippers and kind of clip out the spots that don't make sense, that are kind of outside the frame that you're looking for. All right, but this would be considered um, a taping grid. All right, now our next grid is what I like to call a greening grid. And a greening grid is uh, built entirely out of greenery. Um, there are, there's no other types of mechanical components to it, but let me show you how it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of seeded eucalyptus, and you can see how this has, again, lots of those little breaks that we had talked about before. So it has high grid factor. And I'm going to place it here in the arrangement, and you see this is sitting a little bit high because the breaks aren't really touching that vase. It's kind of, it kind of wobbles in the vase. So I'm going to clip off just a little bit more and place it back in, and that's much better. You can see how it's kind of sitting in there nicely now. And let me go ahead and turn it so everyone can see a little bit better. Now, what you want to do is you can see that this right here is the skinniest portion of the vase. And so this is what we call the neck of the vase. And we're trying to create our grid within this neck portion of the vase. So you want all of your stems to crisscross. That's how this entire uh, process works. So the next thing we'll go ahead and do is we'll actually grab some of our leather leaf and just like we did in the very first uh, greening grid, our foam grid, we're going to put in our leather leaf so it fits on each of the sides and kind of shows us how far out we're actually going to make this overall design. So I have one on each side here, and then we'll put one on the front and one on the back. And notice one of the really important things I'm doing here is that when I place in the greens, they're actually touching the rim of that vase. They're uh, making a lot more uh, uh, connection to the vase, and that's causing a lot of friction. So it's going to keep things from moving. And then, of course, our greenery itself is crisscrossing with one another. So as I add more and more greenery, it becomes more and more stable. 
All right, so the last two we're gonna do, we're gonna put one that sits right in the middle, and then we'll put the second one in so it sits back to back with the center one. And I like to kind of just take the greens and kind of crisscross them together. And this is gonna make a really nice, stable grid. So now we can start putting our flowers in and nothing's really gonna move on us. This is a really great green grid. It's very, very common. All right, now the last grid I have for you is kind of a fun one. It's what I like to call a bind wire grid. And we do this a lot when we're uh, doing wedding arrangements. And it involves, of course, the bind wire. So what I've done is I've I cut off a smaller piece of bind wire. And um, oftentimes with wedding arrangements, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make this really big, luscious arrangement right here. But remember, we're sitting at a table, typically, at a nice reception. And if you're trying to converse across a table, you want to make sure you can see through this. So really, we don't want any stems lower than here in the vase, or somewhere around here in the vase. So we need to go ahead and make this bind wire grid so that way it'll, everything will sit up here on the top and not have to come all the way down to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prepare some uh, seeded eucalyptus. I'm just gonna kind of pull some of these stems and just clean off some of the foliage on the bottom. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with maybe some salal. I'm just gonna break them apart so I have a couple of pieces here. And I'm gonna take off any material that I don't like, if it has any brown spots or things like that, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that off. All right. And I kind of just making a nice little pile for myself here. All right, this is a great little piece just on its own, so I think I'll keep it just like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna build this as if we were making a nice little bridal bouquet. So I'm just gonna work everything into my hand here like this. And I'm just gonna kinda crisscross things again in my hand as if I was just gathering them from the field in kind of more or less a, a little bit of a random order here. Adding a little bit to each side. So notice I add some salal onto each side and kinda just turn the bouquet as I go. Maybe I'll take some more seeded eucalyptus and I'll just kind of add it here on the edge and turn and add another piece of salal. And I just keep on doing this process. If I think my seeded eucalyptus is getting a little floppy, I'll just go ahead and take a little bit of that salal and put it on the outside edge and just keep on continuing to do this until I have this nice little bouquet that's kind of formed in my hand. You can imagine somebody walking down like a nice little bridal bouquet. Now comes the bind wire, and notice I cut this first. It's really important that you do cut this first because guess what, you only have one hand. So uh, now you can go ahead and pick up this bind wire and you put it right on where your first finger is and you wrap. And again, remember I told you how this stuff is a lot like a bread tie. So it's just a really, really thin wire. And what makes it great is that we can kind of just pull all this nice and tight and then we can actually just twist the bind wire, so now it's holding everything together, where my hand was holding it previously. The next thing we'll do is we'll take out our pruning shears, and we'll actually clip all of this at once. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the ends here. So now we have a nice, really even uh, edge, which will sit right into our, our base like this. So this is a very effective grid. Now, um, one of the important things to note about this is that we're really not trying, when we put our flowers in here, we're not trying to poke it through this center wire portion. That's really not what you want. Instead, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take the flowers and we're trying to poke them through this top portion where there's a lot of branches up here and kind of in the middle section of the arrangement. That's what's gonna hold everything together. Um, again, trying to push all your flowers through this little piece of wire that you've bound, it's gonna be a losing battle, I promise you. Um, but you can see how this is a nice, really easy way for us to create a structure that we can work off of. Um, thanks for joining me today and learning how to make all these different types of uh, grids for your flower arrangements. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to call me or email me at tonyjr at sparksflorist.com um, or call me at 775-358-8500, extension 103.